The map of RuneScape is divided into chunks. As a one chunk man, I'll have to complete all tasks in a chunk before moving on to the next. And I'll be starting right here in Yanil. Welcome back to Yanil. Last episode we took on the first real grind, thieving many a man and churning our way to 58 cooking, all while learning about the fascinating city of Yanil along the way. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, I highly recommend watching the series from the beginning as I explain all the account rules in the first episode. Here's where the chunk tasks are currently sitting. When we last left off I had just killed my first soldier, so I think we should start off by trying to find our new best in slot melee upgrade from these guys. We're looking for a steel longsword, so let's kill some soldiers. We're gonna train some defense while we get this started, because our defense level is still very low. Getting absolutely obliterated by this guy, what the f Holy shit, I gotta eat up, bro. Oh my god. These guys really do not mess around. I'm eating so much pie on this guy. Nice, we just got an air rune drop off of this guy. That is quite good. I kind of forgot these guys dropped air runes. Yo, let's go. Melee upgrade. Oh my god. That right there on the ground, the steel long sword, makes all this worth it. I was just getting absolutely destroyed by these guys, but god, it's so much better. And that only took 12 kills. That's awesome. Although those 12 kills took me what feels like forever. So, with the steel long sword acquired, we are one step closer to getting my pre dwarf best in slot. That means it's it's time to revisit a goal from last episode, getting the bronze bar. We need the bronze bar as it unlocks so much for the account, including a defensive upgrade that'll make training on the soldiers much easier in the future since they were completely obliterating me. I've got my mage gear here, so let's go ahead and try it one more time with the dwarves. First dwarf, let's get this, if we can get the bronze bar immediately. Okay, tin ore, also good. I learned a valuable lesson here, which is that I should just always cast on them, even if they look like they're in melee range, because this can happen. Yes! Finally! Finally, yes! The bronze bar! We are in the bronze era. It didn't take very long at all. That is so good. I was starting to get the hang of killing these dwarves, so I stuck around and killed a few more, but nothing too exciting. However, I was learning, memorizing their spawns and watching their movement. This is important as it'll come up later, but for now we've got something more important to do. Alright, you know what time it is. It's time to take this bronze bar and finally make a bronze axe. Finally, we have an axe. We have entered the bronze era. This is huge. This enables so much. We now have access to a bunch more skills, methods, and gear. But before we jump into woodcutting, there's one more thing that we're gonna need. I saw a few comments telling me to lamp hunter to get access to baby implings for a knife so I could train fletching. Thankfully for me, there's a much easier way to get a knife, but I haven't shown it at all yet. It's time to take our first steps into the Yanil Agility Dungeon. The first obstacle requires level 40 agility, but there are no requirements to just walk down the stairs, and if you look on the ground right here, what do we have but a lone knife spawn? Fletching unlocked. I'm super happy to now have access to the chillest skills in the game with wood cutting, fletching, and fire making. These are all chunk tasks, so let's knock out a whole bunch of goals and get ourselves a defensive upgrade with the oak shield at 27 fletching. How about a level montage to get us there? Two, three, <laughs> four wood cutting, and five wood cutting, six, now chop with a steel axe whenever that happens, seven, two fletch, eight, nine, ten wood cutting, three fletching, eleven wood, oh, wood, thirteen wood cutting, four fletching, five fletching, fourteen, a new fashion scape, we got the hat, fully a vibe for wood cutting, that's, that's huge. And there we go, fifteen wood cutting, we can cut oak trees. That's half a chunk task done. Six fletching, seven fletching, twenty wood cutting, eight fletching, 
nine fletching and there is 10 fletching finally i was genuinely an hour and i got 1000 fletching xp so that's really slow 11 fletching there's another fletching level 13 fletching there's a nice one 25 wood cutting 14 15 fletching finally we can now finally use oak logs for fletching there we go last log of the inventory brings us to 30 wood cutting very nice we can cut willows eventually when we unlock those there's 20 fletching that's a nice xp boost oak short bows 35 why not Let's make freaking go, genie. I don't even care anymore. We're just we're just going for it. Dropping that on agility. 45. 25 fletching. That's another XP increase. Very nice. Oak longbows. There's 26. Just need one more now. We got an evil bob fishing random, which is actually really relevant to me. Because level 15 fishing unlocks the fishing trawler minigame teleport, which is a way I can return to my area, enabling better future chunk rolls. All right, here we go. Hitting our fletching goal. 27 fletching, huge. We can now fletch oak shields. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go, our new best in slot shield and a chunk task complete. Looks kind of dope though, that looks great. There's one other goal that we need the bronze axe to hit, and that is some fire making levels. So let's just jam through these real quick. Boom, bam, bong, bop, boop, boing, boop, boing, 10 fire making, 11 fire making, boop. Sorry, I forgot what I was doing there for a second. Boop, boing, boing. And there we go, 15 fire making. Only took a sec. We can now burn oak logs. So let's go ahead and do that. That's the log chopped, and that is the log burned and there we go there's another chunk task complete i think it's time to move on to something else here's 20 defense which might clue you into what we're doing next with the oak shield i'm one step closer to my pre-dwarf best in slot but there's one more item i need the steel med helm from the soldiers it's a 1 in 128 drop so i'm gonna need to train up my combats a bit before i go back for more soldier kills Nice, clean 20 prayer. There's 25 defense, and uh, that was interesting, whatever just happened there. And I'm always pretty religious about raking whenever I walk by the patch. There's 14 farming. Okay, quiz master random, let's go. We just got the mystery box. Let's see if we get lucky. I'm feeling good. No. Here's some combat milestones. We got 35 strength. There's 30 defense. 25 attack and 25 prayer. Nice. Another quiz. Let's see what's up this time. We have succeeded at the quiz. You receive a mystery box and it contains an easy clue scroll. Huh? Yeah, no. <laughs> 30 attack. That's adamant weapons. By the way, I've received some comments, dare I say some allegations, saying my style is similar to uh, Settled's. Whatever you do, do not compare me to Settled. I would hate to be called similar to my favorite YouTuber. That would really hurt my feelings if you left a comment saying how I'm basically just as cool and smart and handsome as Settled. But if you do, you should also subscribe. And there's a nice looking level, 40 strength. We can wield rune warhammers. No kidding. And there's 35 hit points. Definitely actually becoming a, uh, a serious battler roar here. Of course, I've been collecting all the drops from the men and we've got... 300 mine runes banked. That looks really nice. Well, I guess we unlocked sevens as a new max hit. That is really good as I can one shot these guys now. Let's go. Yo, let's freaking go. We got the lamp brother putting that shit into agility. And this should be some more fishing XP. That'd be pretty cool. 650, we're at level 10 fishing. That's awesome. These fishing levels are actually pretty important because of the potential for the fishing trawler. There's 15 farming, grow oak trees, and yeah, gonna be able to plant some seeds eventually. And we got another evil bob fishing random for 13 fishing. Very nice. We just need one more of those and I think we'll be good for fishing trawler. Level 30 prayer. I am very holy. Kills man. All right, with some improvements made to the combat stats, base 30s, got 45 strength, 38 hit points. We're just a lot stronger than we were before. I say it's time to head back to the soldiers and see if we can start working on their drop table and we might actually find ourselves another gear upgrade. So let's jump on that now. We got some pies. Let's do it. Bruh, that's a lot of steel long swords. Oh, and there's a blood rune. That's another pretty rare drop. And we've got an iron ore and nature runes in the inventory. We're making pretty good progress on the drop tables over here.
Okay, weirdly, earth runes were one of the last things I was waiting for from these guys. So now we literally just need one more drop, the most important drop, the steel medhelm. Hey, we got our first boots. Looking, actually looking kind of nice. I don't mind those. Oh, let's go. Finally, holy shit. That took like four hours. Oh my God, finally, the steel medhelm. Look at me. Oh man, that actually looks kind of awful. That is so funny, but look, now I match my brothers. Look at us. In honor of completing the soldier drop table, it's time for another fun Yanil fact. This time, tower guards. I've talked a lot about the drops from these soldiers, but how about these tower guards? These guys mostly hang out over here at the watchtower and annoyingly prevent you from going up the ladder. It turns out they have identical drop tables to the soldiers. You might think they'd basically just be copies of each other at that point, given that they have the exact same combat level and have the same drops, but... 2001 Gower design strikes again, as these two NPCs have... marginally different stats? The biggest difference is the Tower Guard's much larger defense against Slash, which is bad for me, so I've never even killed one. Alright, back to the chunker. The pre-dwarf best in slot has been achieved. This will be the gear that I wear for quite a while to come. Also, pre-dwarf best in slot is really funny to say, but you might be wondering what I actually mean by that. Well, I've been concocting a plan. I need more bronze bars to train range in the future, so I want to kill more dwarves. With higher smithing levels, I may eventually be able to craft myself some more armor. But to kill dwarves, I need runes. I'm gonna make a goal of casting 1000 strike spells to not only get more bars, but also get started on my magic training. This means I need to kill a lot more men for their mind rune drops, so let's get to it. And this is gonna be man kill number 3000, or at least tracked man kill number 3000. Done some on mobile. There we go, 3000 men. I will put the loot tracker up on the screen right now. We can kind of see where we're at. Hey, and there we go. There's 50 strength. That's a level I've been waiting for for quite a while. We can officially hit eights right now, which is pretty good. We're gonna train up some more attack, just get more consistent. And then defense, probably go for 40s, maybe even go for 50s, we'll see. Yo, is that back-to-back -back mine runes? Let's go triple back-to-back -back mine runes. Aw. Oh. I got a comment that mentioned the beginner clue step I had in the bank, and this is a step in somewhere pretty far from everywhere I can go. They said I should drop it, and that I should actually try to get a clue step somewhere at the Wizard's Tower, because I may end up there sooner than anywhere else with a beginner clue step, so that seems like a good idea. We'll try to find a Wizard's Tower beginner clue step. Just checking in to say there's level 35 attack. Let's go! Yes, 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 yes. And we're right there with the chest. There we go, more air runes adding to our 1,000 casts goal. And we've got another Quizmaster random for... Oh my, oh my god, god, you guys, guys we can be getting the only casket! No way! Holy shit! That was 40 coins. Shout out to this guy, I love it when people come visit me in the, uh, man house. Brother, you you nil lock iron? Yes, sir. Sweet. Enjoy murder. There's level 40 attack. Yet another quiz random for a cabbage. Hmm. It's, uh, not good. The mind rune stack grows. Very nice. We're finally over 700 mind runes. Whoa, what the? Yeah, this is, uh, she's reborn. I met him once before and then he showed up looking like this. Hmm. <laughs> Real nice. The fit is truly next level. Every visit shall be more spectacular than the laster. And there's 45 attack. Do you ever just kill a man so hard that he, uh, stays dead? And here's the last kill for 5,000 men with a Ranar. Nice. I'm gonna take a tiny break from this and do some more thieving as I do need more air runes and I'm kind of hoping for some more maze randoms. 46 thieving. There's 47 thieving. It may look like I'm staring at a wall, but there's actually a barrel on the other side of this wall right here that I can click on. And let me show you what I've got here. This is what I call the uh, triple beer drinking tech. I don't know. I'm still working on the name. There's 48 thieving proceeding nicely. We're almost 20% of the way done. So it isn't a chunk goal, but I thought it'd be fun to uh, make some cakes that I had the materials for lying around. So let's go ahead and do that. And I burnt one. That's not the best. Well, we made a cake and we made a chocolate cake. I don't think I've ever seen a burnt cake in my entire life. <laughs> 
There's 49 thieving. This is uh, very slow. Extremely slow. Well, we uh, got a ring. Didn't have one of those before, so now we do. Guys, I think it's a hack. There's now three men. Wait, wait, no, it's just, it's just, it's just cheese reborn. It's an impressive cosplay, I'll give him that. What do you think you're doing? <laughs> well, back to it. Did that man just transform into a, a drunk clown? 100,000 thieving XP. That is a lot of pickpockets. By the way, during this time, the region locker runelight plugin that creates this darkened border around my chunk was down as a recent game update broke it. It was quickly fixed, and I just want to give a huge shout out to Slay to Stay who created the plugin and Hooder who recently took over maintaining it. On top of that, I realized I never acknowledged Source Chunk who created the chunk picker that we all know and love. Without these talented individuals, we wouldn't have the tools to create the one chunk content that you all love, so definitely show them some appreciation. There's kind of a big one, 50 thieving. That is pretty exciting. You might think I'm pretty close to 65, though I would unfortunately have to inform you that I am actually less than one quarter of the way there. Oops. Uh, that's, uh, 51 thieving. And we've got another maze. Okay. If you come to the Josh Isn't Gaming channel on YouTube.com specifically for new ways to exploit the maze random, well, guess what, because you're in luck. <laughs> Yet another discovery has been made to increase the number of runes I can get out of this random event. A Chunk Discord member sent this PSA that hopping to a non-member's world while inside a maze random rerolls the attack and defense potions, increasing the likelihood of getting any other item from 1 in 10 to 1 in 8. This was confirmed later to also work in members only chunks by just switching back to a members world at 1% maze timer. Alright, we are at the end of this maze, so I think I'm just gonna click this chest, and then I should be able to log out, and if I do this right, I won't get teleported to Lumbridge, because that's where you go if you mess it up. And we'll just log back in, and this should port us right back to Yanil. Yeah, there we go. Very nice. Let's check the spoils. That was actually about half as many air runes as I expected to get that time, which kind of sucks, but it's okay. We're there, Rock. Sir, this is a Wendy's. A back-to-back -back maze that is genuinely insane. How do we get these? I don't get it. That's insane. Also, if you're ever stupid like me and accidentally click through the dialogue, you can just click the chest again to keep the timer paused. Just a PSA for you. And the final one is air runes. I love that. I think that's the first time that's happened. That's awesome. That just feels so good. So now we log out and we'll switch back to a member's world. And let's take a look. I'm really excited to see. That is some really nice runes. The bronze arrows, that's annoying. But it turns out that was exactly the right amount to get us to 1,000 air runes. That's amazing. And now we just need some more mine runes and we can start killing our 1,000 dwarves. 37 prayer, the first overhead unlocked. Protection from magic, that is amazing. We are actually making some pretty good gains here. Wow, also I just got this clue and I didn't realize, but it's a wizard's tower step, one of the ones I was looking for. But actually, now that I think of it, I don't know if I can get a spade. In fact, I think I can't get a spade. I'm pretty sure I have to drop this. If you know of a way for me to get a spade, let me know in the comments. Honestly, I'm just kind of curious. Yo, dunce random, let's go. We got the book of knowledge, yes. Okay, so you may notice that I have a lamp in my inventory and I have this book of knowledge. Now, I was gonna try to do some shenanigans where I wait until I get another random to see which one I was gonna use, but I had learned something recently, which is that you can't have two books of knowledge in your inventory at the same time, which I'm really glad I know because if you try to have two books at the same time, one just turns into coins, which would have been really sad. So I'm going to just use this one right now on agility, and that means I'm waiting for another book to get my level because we have 13 XP left. So next book means level two agility. Jeez, okay, double <laughs> clue scroll in one drop. No, and no, but damn, that's uh, something. Well, as you can see in the chat, Giles just gave me a loop half of the key, which I believe is the rarest item on the uh, 
Surter random event. So that's <laughs> good, I guess. I don't really know what to make of that. 50 attack. There we go. Very nice. We can wield granite weapons. Definitely uh, gonna, gonna be doing that pretty soon. You know, I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna do the 50 defense also because I really have access to almost no defensive gear in this chunk. It finally happened. We finally have the Yanil step. We're pretty close to being done with this grind, so I definitely don't expect to get another clue step, but I'll try juggling this in the meantime. Why not? And there was 35 defense. I don't think I'm going to hit another major milestone before I am done finishing up my mind rune stack. And my prediction was right because not even just a few minutes later, we get the last mind rune that I was looking for. So why don't we go ahead and... Uh, Add this to the stack in the bank. Now we have 1,000 air runes and 1,000 mind runes, and we are set up for 1,000 casts of uh, various spells, so we're going to definitely get on that. But before that, I think it's time for another fun Yanil fact. If I were to show you this, what would you call it? I'll give you a moment to think about your answer. All right, time's up. Let me guess, you probably said it's a door. Maybe you even looked at the surrounding buildings which have similar objects on them, all called doors. Unfortunately, in the case of the man house here in Yanil, you would be wrong. This, my friends, is a large door. It's a regular sized door. This is what an actual large door looks like, by the way. And while we're on the topic of doors, I thought you might be amused to know that you can do this. <laughs> well... All right, with 1,000 casts banked, it's time to move on to Operation Dwarf Slayer. As a quick reminder, I need all the bar and ore drops I can get from these guys if I'm gonna smith knives to train all the way to level 50 ranged. This means killing a lot of dwarves. But behind the scenes, I've been working on a plan to make this grind much easier. What I noticed from my last few attempts was that I would get pulled out of my chunk by dwarves moving out of range while I cast on them. I needed a way to stop myself from moving off my one tile wide strip where I could safely lure the dwarves. The solution? Well, let me introduce you to my friend Skeldor. Skeldor is another chunk content creator, but he's also one of those runelite plugin wizards. I reached out to him with my problem and he got right to work making an incredible plugin for the chunk and tileman community. Hold your ground. If you want all the details, go check out his plugin release video and watch his Chunk Foliar series while you're on his channel. But for my purposes, this plugin let me put in my max range and now it'll stop me from using a spell on an enemy who isn't in my line of sight. I also turned on the line of sight plugin to visualize the range, which was really useful as I didn't realize that line of sight spreads out like this. After some testing, I thought I had it all figured out, but I had no idea just how wrong I was. Here's a video I sent to Skeldor at 2.23 a.m. after a long night of testing. I'm thinking I have <laughs> solved the dwarf issue. This dwarf seems to spawn here every time. I can hit him from within my chunk. I kill him. He spawns back there. And because he spawns stationary, it gives me what seems like a pretty good chance to almost always hit him while he's still stationary. He got like a tick or so. And I don't chase after him if he moves. Now, I wasn't entirely wrong, that dwarf does always spawn there, but... Whoa, what, what? Wait, what the f- Oh no, wait, is that the wrong dwarf? Wait, what happened? It was here that I uncovered a runescape mechanic that I had never heard of before. Apparently, there's a chance for NPCs to walk before they even spawn, effectively spawning them on a different tile, and they start moving immediately. Doing some independent research, I found it to be about a 1 in 6 chance that they would do this. This means that my spawn killing method only works for an average of 6 shots in a row before I have to reset the lure which can take... some time. Thankfully, as I was working through this grind, I had some handsome gentlemen drop by and give me a hand. Shout out to my man GX here who offered to help me with some dark lures. I didn't want to bring an alt to help with this, but I'll never turn down help from the community. And of course, you know who it is. Cheese shows up to spec out any dwarves who wander off, helping me reset the lure position. This was genuinely super helpful, but I still had 1,000 spells to cast on these guys. To work around the inconsistencies of the respawn mechanics, I had to seriously focus on learning how these dwarves work. So, I studied their ways. Their movement. I learned their culture and lifestyle. Eventually, I became a dwarf hunting master. 
I even began developing advanced techniques. And as it turns out, shooting 1000 spells gets you quite a few magic levels. Dwarf montage? Dwarf montage. And there's six magic. There's level seven magic, eight magic. Also, I haven't acknowledged the shape of this yet, but uh, yeah. And there's nine magic. That's actually insanely massive because we can now switch from water strike to earth strike. So that is really good. Also, there are still many flubbed kills like this in here. And when this happens, I do not finish the kill. I usually drop the dwarf by either world hopping or running away. And there is level 10 magic. And there's 11 magic, 13 magic. We have unlocked fire strike. Not sure if or when I'll be using fire strike in the near future. Oh, two bronze bars. That's so good. There's 15 magic. Hey, and there's a big level 40 defense. We can now wear rune armor. That is so sick. A hey, level 17 magic. That is the level for wind bolt. We just unlocked chaos runes. Oh my God. Maze time. Yet another evil Bob random event for some more fishing XP. Hey, 15 fishing. This is amazing. This means we can get to fishing trawler. That is so huge. That's actually so, so, so good. You see some weird stuff in the south wall, you know. There's 19 magic. We can cast curse now. 20 magic. There's 21 magic for low level alchemy. What the shit? A ruby? I don't even want to know what the drop right of that is. <laughs> We just shot off the 500th spell, meaning we are halfway through this grind now, but we're gonna take a break from the regularly scheduled dwarf murder for a detour to something very delightful, so let's go take a look. So a few weeks ago, there was a Reddit post that mentioned this pond right here saying there should be a duck added to it. Well, Jagex might not be willing to make this type of game-breaking change, but I know a guy who is. Yet again, Skeldor is on the job releasing the Duck Duck Goose plugin, which puts ducks where they should and shouldn't be. Again, go check his channel for the plugin release video. It's great. Wait a minute, this isn't prop hunt. So if you turn this plugin on, there we go. Ducks, and they're doing something? Anyway, thanks Skeldor, and thanks to the original poster for the idea. Yanil is now truly complete. Anyway, back to the dwarves. 25 magic. Uh, I can now cast teleport to Varrock so I can teleport away from these f***ing dwarves who are ruining my life. There's 45 defense. There's 27 magic. We can enchant emerald jewelry. That's exciting. Shout out to Nova Chunker who just got 60 fletching. 28 magic. Levels are getting much further apart now. So now that we're toward the end of this grind, I think it's time I talk about some of the advanced dwarf luring techniques I mentioned earlier. This is what I like to call the double dwarf stack. Now the double dwarf stack is getting a lot easier now that I understand their pathing a little better, but there's one important element of the double dwarf stack, which is that the back dwarf needs to be the dwarf that spawns right here that I'm chaining. Because if I kill him first, and then I'm still fighting this guy, there's a good chance that he'll walk away before I kill the other guy. So I have to chain the double dwarf stack with a other dwarf, usually this dwarf that spawns over here, and then the main dwarf. So that is some uh, hot dwarf tech for you. Another improvement made to the original plan is that when the main dwarf I'm spawn killing does the weird spawn walking thing, I'll switch over to this other dwarf as he tends to walk along this diagonal line of sight. So I can usually get at least one kill by the time the main dwarf walks back into tagable range. This is the high risk double dwarf stack. I have the secondary dwarf aggroed behind the tree and I need to get my spell cast in during the few ticks it takes him to walk to me. Otherwise I won't be able to tag the other dwarf since it's not a multi-combat zone. Oh my god. This day has only been spoken of in Legends. The coveted triple dwarf tech. No one has seen it until just now. Sorry. I apologize. This is really good. <laughs> we got the second book of knowledge. With this book, we will have level two agility. That is so good. And now we can use this lamp on agility. And we are already a good chunk of the way in. That is so good. Got a special little moment here. There we go. 40 prayer. Very nice. Protection from missiles unlocked. I didn't even notice, but I was also 500 total level at the same time. That's so sick. 
It has been over five hours of straight killing dwarves and we are so close, but I think I'm gonna take a little break and finish this up later. And with only 13 casts left, we have level 30 magic. Pretty good level to end off on. All right, and this is the very last magic shot. To finish up this round of dwarf kills, let's see if we can make it work. We can. Beautiful. A beautiful double dwarf to end off the, uh, the grind. Love that. And with no more mine runes, no more air runes, that is the end of quite a long, long grind. Let's go take a look at the bank, see where we're at. Here's the bank, and I'll put the overall loot tracker on the screen right now. Thanks to Mr. GX, we ended up with well over 1,000 kills despite the fact that I screwed up tons of my casts and had to relure. Now, this may seem like a lot, but I ran some calculations, and it looks like I'm gonna need to kill 4,000 dwarves to be able to smith the bars for 50 range. So, if you want to help this account progress, you can come find me in Yanil and bring some dark lure casts. But this is where we'll end it for now. This ended up being a long one, but we made a ton of progress this episode. Here where the stats are sitting, we more than doubled our total level since last episode, most of which came from combat stats. And here's the status on the chunk tasks. We completed the wood cutting and fletching tasks after gaining access to an axe. We also made some real progress toward our magic and thieving goals and got our very first agility level. That's actually really exciting. Not to spoil anything, but you might be surprised to know that at this point, I'm about halfway through my entire agility lamping goal. As always, I hope you enjoyed this episode and the original music I created for it. If you want to listen to the soundtrack, there's a link to the playlist in the description. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell, you're not going to want to miss what's coming up. Speaking of which, you might just be hearing from a certain man living in a certain shed in a certain swamp very soon. If you have no idea what that means, you need to catch up on my other series, Sir Lumbington, the Lumbridge to Remington locked Ultimate Iron Man so that you're ready for what's about to happen next. Anyway, until next time, bye bye